Have you ever turned your attention to an unusually bright star above the horizon in the evening? If yes, then it's likely you might be wondering, what is it? The answer may surprise you, because this is not a star at all, but a planet. No, you heard right. This celestial object is nothing more than the closest planet to our Earth, Venus. Hubble. The one that was named after the ancient Roman goddess of beauty. Although, in my opinion, it's too hot for the Romans. It turns out that you can see it by just going out into the street. And if you had at least a weak telescope, then looking at Venus, you would see you would see not much of anything, because the planet's surrounded by an impenetrable cloud layer. By the way, for a long time it was assumed that the place was full of life behind these clouds, just like on Earth. But then in 1970, the Venera 7 probe landed for the first time on the surface of the alleged beauty, after which its cameras recorded a completely different picture. The first evidence that the planet turned out to be not as friendly as one might assume is the fact that the device lived on the surface for no more than 20 minutes. And before that, for 33 minutes, it had been transmitting indicators of the Venusian atmosphere to Earth. Without exaggeration, Venus can be called a real branch of hell in the solar system. The temperature on its surface can reach 460 degrees Celsius. But this planet can surprise not only with a truly warm reception. For example, Venus does not have a magnetic field, and it rotates in the opposite direction to most other planets, except for its brother planet Uranus, which is lying on its side for some reason, but that's another story. But that's not all. One revolution around its own axis, that is, one Venusian day, takes 243 Earth days, while a year lasts only 225 Earth days. That's right, a day on Venus is longer than a year on Venus. Under such conditions, the length of the day and night in the aggregate is 117 full-fledged Earth days. That's exactly where there might be enough time to get some sleep. Still, not a single moon accompanies the planet, although one presumably existed at earlier times. Where did the Venusian moon go? Nowhere. It's around. According to the observations of many astronomers, we can conclude that earlier Mercury was a moon of Venus. Now both are planets and both are lonely, and perhaps a little restless. But the plain physical facts about the celestial body usually do not attract ordinary inhabitants of the Earth. Representatives of mankind love to excite their imagination and try on the conditions of an alien world for themselves. However, we can say for sure, the Venusian climate is definitely deadly for us. Like it or not, but in order to have an understanding regarding this planet, you still have to turn to the official facts. The size of our hot neighbor is just slightly smaller than the Earth, 95% of the diameter of our planet, and its mass is 81% of the Earth's. Accordingly, the gravitational attraction of the object is almost comparable to that which we feel at home. Therefore, if a person had to step on its molten surface, then definitely he would not feel anything like the Martian lightness, where humans will feel just roughly one-third the gravitational pull they do here on Earth. By the way, if Elon Musk suddenly decided to drill a tunnel through Mars, then it would take him no more than three or four days. But I digress. Atmospheric pressure on Venus is the same as that at about 900 meters of ocean depth here on Earth. And that's a lot. That kind of pressure compresses even carbon dioxide, turning it into a strange two-faced substance, what's called a supercritical fluid. It is this monstrous natural pressure that flattened the Venera 4 probe, located at an altitude of 28 kilometers above the surface of the planet. This happened due to a flaw in the machine. The extreme planet's real pressure is 93 atmospheres, which the developers of the device could not even dream of in a nightmare. In the future, when forming and equipping Venusian probes, this parameter must be taken into account. 
Besides the tyrannical pressure, the world of Venus is also one of a terrible heat that easily melts lead, coupled with a suffocating greenhouse effect caused by an incredibly thick cloud layer consisting mainly of carbon dioxide and nitrogen, as well as being interspersed with sulfuric acid. The atmosphere of the planet is also involved in the making and perpetuation of a global hurricane, one that's been circling around the clock for millions of years. Near the edge of the clouds, the wind speed reaches 140 meters per second. But interestingly, above the surface, the movement of atmospheric flows is almost imperceptible. Also on Venus, thunderstorms sparkle and sulfur rains pour, but they don't corrode the surface of the celestial body, but instead evaporate before ever reaching it. On Earth, a similar phenomenon is called Virga. Numerous probes flying past or briefly landing on Venus have allowed us to see this hell, well, at least with one eye. Conventionally, the surface of the planet is divided into two continents, the land of Ishtar and the land of Aphrodite. The Magellan probe, having hardly broken through the dense impenetrable clouds, was able to capture some Venusian views. This image shows channels of lava rivers, numerous ancient volcanoes, hundreds of craters, and multiple ridges, including the largest ridge on Venus, the Maxwell Mountains, about 11 kilometers high. For comparison, the highest point on Earth is Mount Everest, whose height is slightly less than 9 kilometers. By the way, this is also the coldest place on the planet. The temperature here does not rise above 380 degrees Celsius, and the atmospheric pressure at the top of the ridge is half that at the bottom, like a mountaintop resort compared to the underworld lying at its foot. The Venera 13 spacecraft gave Earthlings our first color panoramic photograph of the planet, which shows rusty, granular soils and fragments of dark brown basalt rocks, which, by the way, are quite young. They're no more than 500 million years old. The probe spent the longest time on the planet at 2 hours and 7 minutes, transmitting many fantastic images and even unexpected sounds like thunder and strange pops until the merciless climate of Venus interrupted the broadcast. But the most important question that interests the terrestrial community is whether it's possible to settle on Venus, or in other words, terraform it or colonize this recalcitrant neighbor in some other way. Let's try to figure it out. There is an interesting nuance. The vast atmosphere of Venus consists of many layers, the conditions of which differ significantly. Among them, the tropopause is of particular interest to us. According to probe studies, this 15-kilometer deep area is characterized by quite comfortable temperatures from plus 20 to plus 37 degrees Celsius and pressure similar to that of the Earth. It's here that it's planned to create a flying colony, consisting of huge ships equipped with titanic balls covered with a protective Teflon layer and filled with Earth-like air. There's also a natural shield from solar radiation in this location. Yes, Venus has an ozone layer. But even this exotic project is not the only one suggested. It's also proposed to install some huge kinds of umbrellas at the Lagrange point between the Sun and Venus, which would significantly reduce the temperature on the planet, making it habitable. In order to enrich our red-hot neighbor with water, it's planned to organize a massive bombardment of its surface with comets and asteroids. True, for this purpose they'll need either a lot of them or just a few really, really big ones. After that, plans will be put into action to deliver specific algae to the Venusian atmosphere, in particular the tropopause zone, for subsequent reproduction. In general, the attractiveness of the exploration of Venus takes place for several reasons. First of all, territorially, because this is the planet closest to us. 
Also, it's attractive because of the similarity of the planet to ours in terms of weight, size, and indicators of gravity. In addition, if it were not for the dense layer of clouds, then the temperature on the surface of the planet would not be so unbearable. At the same time, there's almost no water on Venus, and the level of radiation is greatly increased due to the absence of a magnetic field and its proximity to the Sun. Therefore, its colonization is a difficult and unlikely event, at least for now. But, as they say, keep dreaming. Moreover, don't forget, even the Earth will cease to exist sooner or later. If this video seemed really interesting to you, don't forget to mark it, put an electronic finger up, and be sure to subscribe to the channel together with a bell in order to be one of the first to know about new releases. We have many more meetings with different mega super planets ahead. And by the way, your comments with the hashtag WatchHubble will be included in the next video.